So in this video I just want to talk a little bit about my development setup because you guys have been asking what team am I using, what's this terminal, what's this font, what's this app and so on. So I just decided to make this video so whenever somebody asks me something like that I can refer them to this. And also I made a similar video to this one called my Sublime Text 3 setup but since I'm not using Sublime anymore I don't think that video is that much relevant. I and in this video we are not going to go into you know webex gulps and the actual development stuff but just the applications that i'm using in or around my development process so first of all let's just get this out of the way so for the operating system i using macOS. I used to be a long time windows user also i used linux for two or three years and I can honestly say macOS is just the best operating system I ever used. I'm not going to talk shit about Windows or Linux. They are both great operating systems, but macOS is just uh, what's really, really uh, nice uh, to use when doing front-end development, which I mostly do. Mostly because of the terminal and mostly because of that power, power of Linux or FreeBSD behind all this graphical stuff right so that's why i like mac os their computers not so much this is my current setup as you can see i have to use external <laughs> keyboard on top of my normal a laptop keyboard because uh it uh, you know it's shit because that keyboard just i don't know what they were thinking with that they had the best keyboard on the market now they, eh, never mind Okay, so that's the operating system. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. You, of course, probably know what macOS is, what Windows are, and so on. Okay, so let's get to my code editor. So you probably know that previously I've been using Sublime Text, and I still love it very, very much. But uh, as time goes on, you tend to notice some things that other code editors have and Sublime doesn't and the plugins that replace that functionality aren't that good and so on. I still love it as I said but I prefer PHP Storm. It has so much out of the box that you practically don't need any plugins. Uh, also I tried VS Code a couple of times and just didn't stick, I don't know, what's with that code editor i just can't get into it so i started using php storm and it's great and let's just look at the plugins that i have installed as you will see there are not a lot of them uh, these are some of the plugins that you get out of the box with uh, with php storm but the ones i installed is ac jump uh, graphql uh, material theme svelte tab mover just for moving your tabs uh, zero width character locator. Uh, this is for finding the characters that you can see in your code and removing them. And you have this handlebars and env file support. And that's it. These are all my plugins. Uh, the interesting one, of course, for the theme, I'm using Material Theme, and for the font, I'm using Operator Mono. I'm going to put that on the screen because I'm getting that question a lot. The interesting thing about all of these plugins, actually, I just want to show you one of them, uh, is this AC Jump. I really like it. You can do something like this, right? And now, if I want to go to this line, I just do a a HJ, and then I'm here. You do this, right? So I want to go to this line. I do WS. Really great. You don't have to use your mouse at all. So this is my PHP Storm setup. As I said, it uses Material Theme UI uh, with, uh, as you can see, I'm using Material Pale Knight. And there are some options right here. Actually, Material Theme is very, very good on PHP Storm. It has a lot of options. So, uh, and it, as you can see, it looks like this. Also, I heavily edited the editor to remove most of the stuff that I don't need. So that's why it's looking so clean. So you can, that's one, one more thing I like about PHP Storm is you can make it look practically uh, whatever you like. So this pretty much looks like sublime text. So next up is my terminal. And of course I'm using iTerm2 
tried using the that hyper one but it's just too slow and what I don't like about it and I couldn't find the plugin for it is this so I really really like like this functionality and I couldn't find it on any other terminals so when I do command and weird key uh, right next to the one it opens up my uh, terminal so it was on another monitor now I'm just going to show it again so when I do this, it just shows up, right? And whatever screen I'm on, it's just going to show up there. So Hyper Terminal cannot do that. And I really like that functionality. And also it's great. Uh, I really liked Hyper Terminal because of the way it looked. And I tried to get uh, iTerm to look that way. And now it does. Uh, with the newest versions it does and uh, a lot of people have been asking me how did I get that look and I'm going to leave the link in the description below and I'll also put it on the screen to a blog post which is going to explain how you can make your uh, iTerm2 look like this of course you have to use the version it's called iTerm2 but it's actually version 3.3 Right, so I'm using iTerm and also with it, I'm using a fish shell. I'm going to leave uh, that in the description below because fish shell is just great, right? As you can see, it, uh, it's going to add a suggestions to whatever you are doing, right? So fish shell has a lot of functionality. Uh, but the only thing I don't like about it is it's not compatible to bash. So whenever you see some bash script, uh, it's probably not going to work with fish. You're going to have to adjust it a little bit. Not too much, right? It's pretty understandable, but you would have to adjust it. It won't work the way it is. Uh, for example, like it works on Z shell, uh, bash and so on, right? All of the other shells. So this is fish shell. It's uh, finally a command line shell for the 90s, right? So this page looks like it's from the 90s, but bo don't be discouraged by that. It has a lot of, lot of great functionality, mainly concerning auto completion and so on. It also works uh, great with Git and something like that. It will show you all of your um, branches and so on. You can choose them. Uh, so let me just maybe go to... So if I want to switch branches, so I do git branch and then do something like this, right? So I will get those branches and I could choose whatever I want, right? So that's one of the nice things about fish shell. But as I said, it's not compatible with bash. So if you need something compatible with bash, don't use it. And for the terminal, I, of course, am using iterm2 with I think it's a custom theme or something like that maybe I installed the uh, so I am currently using pale knight so you have material theme for this also okay so that's my theme in the iterm and that's about it I'm not going to spend any more time on this I think we said enough about it as I said uh, the link of on how you can get iterm to look like this is going to be in the description below so next up for the file manager, I'm using forklift. I really can't ever get used to something like Windows Commander. Uh, no, is it called Windows Commander? Windows File Manager, whatever it is. Finder on a Mac or whatever flavor of file manager that you get with some different Linux distributions. They all pretty much look the same. What I like to use is uh, two pane uh, file managers like forklift right here. And that's because I grew up in DOS, right? So that was my first operating, real operating system, DOS, where you have Norton Commander there. Then when we switch to Windows, you have Windows Commander, which uh, was renamed to Total Commander. On Linux, I used mostly Midnight Commander. And then when I switched to Mac, I was trying to get application that does that same thing so i want to have two pens uh, i want to be able to go into as you can see i have this changes that zip file i want to go into that zip file and just you know copy from that zip file whatever i want using the shortcuts so if i go to this and i just do a, a f5 i will transfer this if i want to delete it i do f8 uh, move it to the trash. I can go 
and uh, uh, visit some of my servers, remote servers. I can add a remote server, right? So you can add favorites and it uh, supports a lot of protocols, SFTP, FTP, web dev and so on, right? So you can access all of your files practically from uh, this file manager. Although I am using SSH, command line and everything else, to get most of my stuff done sometimes you just need this kind of graphical interface and it's easier to get everything done uh, that way right so this is forklift i could not recommend it enough if you're on a mac it's just a, it's a mac only application it costs some money i think it's about 30 bucks but it's definitely definitely worth it you can do a lot of stuff with it and it's actually made probably for people like me because uh, if you go to uh, here and you have shortcuts as you can see you have key binding set to commander so Norton commander midnight commander windows commander total commander and uh, they know what they're talking about here or you have, have the finder shortcuts which I hate of course for the browser I'm using chrome and uh, I'm not going to go into Chrome, I'm just going to show you the extensions I'm using. So these are the extensions that I'm using, so Bear. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about Bear at the end of the video. So we have Bear, uh, we have Browser Stack, uh, this is Browser Stack, right, of course. Extensity, I'm going to remove this because I was actually using that uh, so that I can use Grammarly. And since Grammarly is actually using up a lot of resources, I wanted to use that extensions to quickly turn off and on Grammarly when needed. But that doesn't work so well and I actually found myself not using Grammarly that much, so I'm going to remove that also uh okay whatever uh now uh there is also this great application called honey that actually never helped me find any discounts i know there is a lot of commercials about it that they find a lot of discounts whenever i bought something it never once offered me a promo code so remove that also and uh okay so i'm glad we uh cleaned up my uh, extensions a little bit uh, of course i have this json formatter if you have been watching my videos you probably seen that extensions extension used a lot uh, then i have last pass uh, react developer tools when i'm working with react uh, vue.js dev tools when i'm working with the view and i have this tabo which is great because i use two monitors actually i use my laptop monitor and an external monitor and sometimes i want to switch tabs between two monitors because i have two chromes open on one and the other so what I can do is I can just do a shortcut right here. And as you can see, fish shell disappeared and it disappeared because uh, it's now on the other monitor, which you can see. But if I go to that monitor up and do that again, it's going to appear. So just using that shortcut is going to go up and down and that's it. And do we have anything else? No. So this is all of my... Uh, all my extensions the bare extensions uh, extension is for uh, uh, application called bear and you can use it uh, if you go to somewhere like this right so if i click on it actually right click i can save the title and selection save title and url self selection url and so on bear is a great note taking application so previously we used to use Photoshop a lot for creating, actually for designing web pages. I also designed web pages for a while. I'm not very good at it. Uh, we use that, but, uh, but in recent years, most of the designers have moved from Photoshop to something like Sketch. Currently in the company I work for, Human Interaction, uh, we are using uh, Figma, but I don't know, maybe uh, six months ago, we were heavily using Sketch and I actually, actually stayed on Sketch because I like it a bit better. And as you can see, I'm using Sketch to create most of my thumbnails for the videos, right, in Sketch. And I stopped using Photoshop. I actually now am using Affinity Photo. 
Affinity Photo is great because it's much similar to Photoshop, but it's not a resource hog and you can do pretty much everything with it that you can do with Photoshop. And what I do with Photoshop is crop images and make images smaller and maybe change hue and saturation. That's all I do. So that's, that's what this application is for. Uh, I tried using Pixelmator, right? But the UI on the Pixelmator, it was just, you know, weird. Uh, they used to have a normal UI similar to this. And now uh, that application is even smaller than this one. It's very fast, but I just couldn't get used to that UI. Uh, so I switched to Affinity Photo and I'm really happy with it. I don't need Photoshop or anything. But my main design tool, as I said, is this one. So it's Sketch. So now let's just talk a bit about a small utilities I'm using from my day to day work life. So first of all, it's Alfred, of course, you can open up applications with it, you can spell something. So I use it a lot of for this. Unfortunately, unfortunately, right. So and if I click uh, enter, go right here. Uh, do text. I can just copy and paste it and unfortunately so you don't have to go to Google and then try to uh, See what that word is spelled, right? So I'm using uh, Alfred Alfred has lots of uh, options and it's very similar to spotlight search but I have been uh, using Alfred before that and I find it faster and also it has uh, more features so check out alfred for sure if you're not you already using it then i'm using something called spectacle and spectacle is kind of a window manager but uh the only thing i'm using i use it for is just to move my windows from one monitor to another uh using shortcuts like this so this sketch is going to go to my upper monitor right now right and now it, i'm going to get it back you can't really see that. That's the only feature I'm using from the spectacle. But if you check out the, I think it's in preferences, right? It has a lot of shortcuts. So you can center your window, you can put full screen, you can uh, make it uh, be on left half, right half, top half and so on. Spectacle is really great and it's free. So I totally recommend it. Uh, next thing, I really like this application. I found it just a few months ago. So it's called Color Slurp. So I find myself a lot of in situations where I want to know what this color is, right? So if I click a shortcut, I get uh, the uh, hex of that color. And it also does this nice sound. I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to record this, but let's just listen. Right, so it does sound when you when you uh, pick up a, a color and when you click on it you have your saved colors your you have some other options but i mostly am using it for this and of course when you do that and you go to your code editor for example you just do command v and it's going to paste that color in so it's a very very useful uh, little application uh, for music i'm using deezer because I live in Croatia and we don't have access to Spotify. But through throughout the years, I have actually tried three different streaming services. Well, the first one was radio or RDO, whatever. Uh, they went bankrupt. Actually, they failed or something like that. They don't exist anymore anyway. Uh, but it was a great application. It was the best audio streaming application to this day right uh, but i think their pricing model was just uh, they actually were very cheap and then they failed so after that i started using google play music which uh, sucked because it didn't have a desktop application and then i switched to deezer mostly because i'm getting deezer for quote unquote free with my mobile subscription and uh, it's actually pretty great. And since I tried all those three th streaming services, I can honestly tell you they pretty much all have 
same music on them. I didn't find anything on Google Play, Play Music, for example, that uh, wasn't on Deezer and so on. So mostly when I work, I'm listening to something like Synthwave or Chillwave. And lately I'm preparing for the new Tool album, which uh, dropped, which is going to drop uh, on August 30th. And yesterday uh, they became, came available on all of the streaming services. So if you like Tool, you can find them right now on Spotify, Deezer, Google Play Music, probably and so on. And lastly, I love using this small application. It's a great note-taking app called Bear. Uh, and uh, I'm using it for all of my notes. Uh, currently, I'm not paying subscription to it because they promised a web version developed in 2018. Uh, they haven't developed it yet. Uh, there is no Android version. I have an Android phone. So I'm not going to pay that subscription until they actually made any of the versions that I can access through my Android phone uh, because this application is mostly made for iPhone and Mac OS. But it's a great application for taking notes. It has tags, uh, which are right here, right? It has uh, your notes. You can link the notes together. You can add uh, you can add uh, images to it and so on. So it's great note-taking app and uh, I really, really love it. The only thing I don't love about it is they don't have the web app and they don't have an Android app. Okay, so I think I covered most of the day-to-day -day stuff that I use uh, in this video. Uh, if you think of something else, please let me know down in the comments. Also in the description, I will leave the links to the applications I've been using and timestamps so you can jump around in the video and find out what you like. And uh, I think that's about it. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.